Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us for another uh, edition of Condo Insider. So today I have with me, I'm so happy to have with me two of our um, prominent condo attorneys. We have Loree McGuire with Porter McGuire and Kiyakona, and we have um, Na Lan, who is a director with Damon Leong Kupchak and Hastert. Did I pronounce that right? <laughs> Damon Key Leong Kupchak Hastert. Okay. <laughs> so we're going to talk about, um, you know, and, and I know it's a, um, um, a tough subject uh, with COVID and um, having a on-site COVID vaccine clinic. I know one condo has done it already and they were very happy with the results and they have their second one scheduled. I can't remember if it was last weekend or if it's this weekend, but um, they were happy with the results um, with it being on property versus having people to go somewhere else. So we wanna talk about the obligations um, for the condo boards to really promote um, the, um, the health and safety of their residents and the guests that come onto the property as well. So this would apply to even if they have units that are short-term rentals um, and even their, their, um, their residents and their guests, including any vendor contractors, whether it's a condo contractor or a unit owner's um, own contractor that comes onto the property. So, um, so statutorily, what is the obligation of the board of directors um, to, um, can they mandate that the, the residents be vaccinated and show proof of vaccination? Marie, if you wanna comment. Um, sure. Based on my research, I could not find any law, be it Hawaii or any other state that would allow a board of directors to mandate that owners and residents be vaccinated. Um, I mean, basically, in, if you were to do that, you would be uh, subjecting these owners to medical treatment for vaccines in order to live in the condominium, right? So I was thinking in terms of if you, if, if you had a board and they were adamant about this, I think the most that they could do would be to seek to amend their governing documents like you would amend for any other provision and send it out to the owners and have the owners vote on it. And if it passes based on the requisite percentage, then uh, I think the board could enforce it. That being said, I don't know if it could stand up to constitutional scrutiny. Um, you know, they would even, even let's say it did pass and it did stand up to constitutional scrutiny, they would still have to allow for reasonable accommodations for any uh, person who was disabled such that they could not take the vaccine. And similarly, for anyone that had any type of, uh, of a religious affiliation that would prohibit them from getting the vaccine. No, do you have any comments? Yes, yeah, so I think I agree with uh, Relaine. That's the overall, uh, I guess, uh, baseline. All these legal experts, of course, are discussing about this uh, hot topic. There are certain states, they may have a uh, certain statute giving association emergency power, but not in Hawaii. And it really also depends on how your declaration and bylaws are written. There's no such uh, emergency power that's, uh, you know, provided to the association board to make such a major decision because when a unit owner buys a unit into this project, they got a right to live in their unit and also a right to access common elements. So that really brought us to the second, I guess, layer issue in this is can association board condition um, a mandated COVID-19 vaccine for owners who want to access or use common amenities. Uh, that is probably a more defendable position compared with just the 
requiring all unit owners getting a vaccine, regardless whether you use common elements or not. But even still, you know, the, the later one as to a condition to use of common elements, uh, that has still has a lot of issues you need to be careful about. As Lori pointed out, uh, of course, you know, 12 year old, younger, children, they are not even eligible for vaccine at this point. Also, you know, for people with a disability, with a religious belief, reasonable accommodation, you need to provide those to them. Uh, and also, uh, you know, there's always this balance you need to make. Uh, in general, of course, the association has a right to regulate use of common elements to make sure uh, one unit owner's use of this common element will not unreasonably interfere with other unit owners. Let's give an example. If someone is not wearing a mask, you know, he wants to use the common uh, enclosed clubhouse. You know, I would think this is a good example where the association would have the board would have the authority to ban that person from usage if you, you're not in compliance with the mask mandate because the state governor's emergency order already covers that. And basically, the association has the obligation to comply with the government orders. In this scenario, the board would have the right to exclude that person who refused to wear a mask from use of common elements. But as to vaccine mandate, I think it's a very uh, you know hotly debated issue. If a board wants to go ahead to do that, definitely consult with your legal counsel first because that may open up uh, you know claims uh, you know by certain unit owners. But of course, you know, the arguments go both ways. If uh, the association does do, do not does nothing, you know, you don't really, you control the common elements, you also own the common elements, you don't take any sanitary procedures, and you don't enforce safety per protocols during the pandemic, you could also be inviting claims by owners who got, you know, infected when they're using the common elements. Uh, we've heard cases where certain condo, you know, project on uh, neighbor island becomes the cluster center of COVID-19 cases where over 90 cases were found in one project. You don't never, you would never want your community to be on the news, you know, for that. So, um, what about if they arranged for a COVID vaccine um, clinic to be on property? Um, because I know um, DOH is really strongly um, supporting, and they will, they, they actually will um, arrange for um, one of the healthcare providers, Queens or Kaiser, well, Kaiser won't, but um, either Straub or Queens. Queens is really good um, to go actually on site. So would there be anything, um, that, I mean, would you guys agree that the board is within their ability to arrange for that? Because it's going to kind of help some people that don't have a car, so they can't drive. Um, and also with the employee vaccination requirement, because according to John Knorick, we're a business, so we're, we're uh, condos are our employer, so they can mandate that. But, you know, having a clinic on site would help the employees also to get vaccinated um, on that day. So, would you guys agree that um, the boards can arrange for a vaccination um, clinic to, to be done on property? Do you want to go first? Yeah, sure. Um, I think, yes, they can. I mean, what they're trying to do here is facilitate their owners and make it easier for their owners to obtain the vaccine. And I noticed, too, that I believe it's... Um, Queens will provide you with the certificate of liability. So that's going to be the main concern for the association is the liability if somebody is injured during one of these clinics. But if they're willing to provide you with that certificate of liability, then that gives you that comfort. Um, but, it, you know, in, in this regard, you are helping people, especially if you have elderly folks that live in the project and don't have a car, maybe they ride the bus and they're paranoid right now because of COVID, they don't wanna ride the bus. And so they're not getting the vaccine because of that. This would facilitate those people to get the vaccine. And it's also a forum for education because so many people in my experience who are fearful of getting the vaccine, it's because they hear so many different things from all different directions. They don't know who to believe or what to believe. So if you have health professionals on site, then they can answer whatever questions 
your owners and residents may have with regard to COVID and with regard to the vaccine and you know issues that may be of concern to them. And that's what you wanna basically resolve is any fears that they may have so that you can give them the confidence that they need in order to obtain the vaccine. I agree. I think uh, it's a very good idea for association to uh, be the hosting of vaccine of administration. And uh, if you know the state uh, department of health or the medical facility, they're willing to provide a certificate liability for the association uh, before they host this, this would be perfect. Uh, and you know, for some suggestions, I would uh, the board should have a written um, resolution basically uh, saying the association is going to use the common element to host such a vaccine administration event and preferably that should be limited to residents and their close families uh, that way you're not really inviting the public onto your uh, project because if you open that up to the public that may bring in ada issues or some other issues i think it's safer to limit this event still to your residents uh, and their close family members and at the same time it's also a good idea to notify your uh, association insurer you know to give them a notice that this is upcoming and very likely uh, the department or even the hospital that that's helping you collaborating with you to do this may give you some document for you to sign if that's the case you should run it by your legal counsel as well and then you know of course uh, you want to make sure before you host this event you don't have any like uh ha you know potential hazard as the premise liability issues like you don't want there's sleep and fall you know there's pounding water somewhere on the parking lot or you want to remove those trip the potential hazard to make sure you know you're ready for this event and, and also you know enforce your existing policies on mask mandates social distancing and then you know keep a good uh a communication with your owners, uh, that would be excellent. I think if all the associations are taking this step, uh, we should be able to, you know, do much better on vaccination. Because these days, when I hear from friends, from you know other connections in the community, most of the people who got, you know, infected, that's at this point, are those who haven't uh, got the vaccination yet. Right. Right. Yeah. I would. So when Queens um, puts it together or if Queens is gonna be the one doing it, they'll actually do a site visit onto the condo and they'll look at where, um, or the planned, or the condo's planning for them to give them the space. Because one thing they're gonna look for if they have Wi-Fi, um, electricity for the laptops, because they're all on laptops. Um, they bring their own table and chairs, they sanitize everything. Um, they have banners, you know, that, you know, say Queens, COVID, whatever it was. And, um, so they do an initial site visit first with like the resident manager to kind of do a walkthrough. Um, and then they'll also arrange with Queens, they will arrange for the certificate of liability insurance and it takes a matter of days, you know? So there's really a short lag time from when you, when they initially do the visit to the date that they can set it up. Um, they have even arranged, they have the connections, they have even arranged for a police department to be present if they needed to. Awesome. So um, when I helped them do the um, the one at Boat Harbor, when we drove up, I'm like, there's three police cars that drove through and drove out. I go, why is that? And they go, oh, we were there yesterday and arranged for them to be there. So they actually had one guy that stayed there the whole time. Um, I know Mana Lewin had, um, they did theirs and they did have an anti-vaxxer that lived on property. And um, it was kind of crazy, but we kind of knew about it in advance, or, you know, um, and they did consult with their legal counsel to make sure they were all on the same wavelength and they were okay. Um, but it created a little stir on that day, but, um, but the police took care of it. You know, they were actually there to help ease that, that tension. So um, the board was, the board president was very pleased with the way everything worked out. So, and she's really happy because they do things occasionally like arrange, because they have a lot of seniors in their, in their building. Um, or in the property. And every once in a while, they'll arrange for like special services that if anybody wants to jump in on that, you know, they get, they can do that. So this was another one of their special services. Um, Cause I think we really need to make it all the kind of efforts and DOH is really, really bending over backwards to really get these vaccinations done so that we can really stop this. And I'm really kind of 
cringing for the next couple of weeks if the numbers are going to go back up again because of Labor Day weekend, you know? Mm -hmm. I mean, they started to come down, but now like, you know, we had a long weekend. Right. Um, okay, so how would a condo board set into policy and procedures on how to handle COVID? Um, they may or may not require it. it, it I mean, that's going to be like, um, they may not be able to require it, but how can they implement policies and procedures to follow what is being mandated by the government, whichever state and city um, government and federal government? So now you want to take a stab at that one? Sure. So, um, you know, as I said, I guess at this point, it's more like a reasonableness standard, you know, the business judgment and rule, the board got to make a decision on behalf of your project, what would be the best to do to protect the overall health and well being of your owners residents. So, uh, you know, of course, we have CDC guidelines, we also have governor's emergency orders on mask mandates like certain indoor gym, they consider a high risk, uh, they would want that capacity to be limited to 50%. And uh, each county also has, uh, you know, different restrictions, uh, you know, like Oahu, they're going to roll out the safe access, uh, you know, program. Uh, the also the mayor's most recent emergency order also required certain uh, indoor recreational facilities or indoor gym, movie theaters, or, uh, you know, certain other businesses like restaurants, um, those commercial facilities to comply with either show proof of vaccination or you have to do for patrons do like a 48 hour COVID test negative result or for employees or other volunteers. Uh, you have to do the weekly test and uh, of course subject to the exceptions that we just discussed about so you know that could be like a, a a part of like a guide on a reasonable standard. Do you want to go that far or you want to just stay within the CDC guidance, just doing the mask, doing the social distancing. And you, of course you want to make sure, you know, there is some, you know, hand sanitizers available in your common laundry room, elevator, you know, these others to make sure uh, the pools should have written rules, the rules and the regulations that could be a tool for the association to use, to utilize uh, and to enforce uh, the, you know, your policy, your project specific policies during this pandemic. And then, you know, you follow whatever your bylaw says, how you can pass amendment to rules and regulations, tie that into your finding policy or whatever procedure set in place for enforcement. So um, simply rather than having to reinvent the wheel, they can just simply say, we're going to follow our city and county and state and then um, CDC guidelines because because your city and county, they really follow CDC guidelines. So they can simply say, we're going to comply with our, what is the one Oahu.org um, guidelines that are in there, right? Which is simply CDC guidelines. So can they, a board simply say, we're gonna follow those guidelines rather than creating their own guidelines? Well, I think the problem right now is the county restrictions in, at least in Honolulu is stricter than the federal one and the state okay. one. So as I said, you know, for the state one and the C CDC one, that's definitely binding upon the association. But as to the city, most recent emergency order, whether that applies to your, let's see, your indoor gym or your indoor recreation room in your a project, that is still a question because the program is so new, the city hasn't really clarified, you know, but they say in a residential project, if your gym is only open for the residents, then you're exempted from this emergency order. And they also say, even if your business uh, is not subject to this order, you're encouraged to also, you know, apply these rules. But then it comes back to our borderline question, whether the association has this authority to impose on this kind of restrictions, then, you know, of course, there will be owners challenging but as I said, it's really, I think we should watch and see, and it's more likely based on reasonableness. You know, if later on the city clarified, okay, so this is not applicable to associations, then, you know, you know, you do not have to comply. But if the city says, 
if your project, you know, has gas, you know, even staying less than 30 days, they would consider you subject to this program, safe access program, then, you know, of course, you got to update and make sure your project's in compliance. It's a very fluid issue. I think the government, they are also watching the data and try to adjust their policies at the same time. I think okay, same thing. that's a good point. I didn't realize that the city and county ones are a little bit, have a little bit more than the other ones. So that's a good point to, um, to really know. Um, so Lori, let me ask you this question. So what about any kind of requirements or mandates can the board put on any guests or even their own vendors and even the residents own vendors like the repair people that come onto the property? Well, it would depend on your governing documents and what your governing documents say. The board can implement a policy with regard to its own vendors such that the board can require that their own vendors be vaccinated in order to come on property. However, in terms of requiring that an owner's vendors or an owner's contractors be vaccinated, that will depend on the, the uh, amount of authority that the board is granted within the governing documents itself. Um, I know, for example, when John Knorick was on the, the program, he mentioned that an association can basically um, tell owners in terms of whether or not their, their contractors have to be vaccinated. But he also said, you need to check your governing documents. And that's the key here. Because if your governing documents don't give the board the authority to do that, then they can't do that. I mean, that's very broad authority and some documents do give them that authority, but not all documents do. Certainly they can implement a policy as to their own vendors. Um, likewise, in terms of an owner's guests, I don't believe they can say that an owner's guests have to be vaccinated. They cannot, to my knowledge. I've not seen that anywhere. Um, but they can do that with regard to their own vendors. Okay, so um, so just to kind of recap, because I know we're kind of getting uh, close to our time. So really start with the city and county guidelines because they have a little bit a little bit bigger guidelines, right? And then um, also check your CDC and your governing documents, and then work with your um, your uh, your condo attorney um, counsel, legal counsel, to before right. you start implementing all these policies and procedures and all these rules. Um, but basically for condos, we're considered a business. So with John Kenorick, he had said that um, condos can mandate employees to be vaccinated and follow those kind of procedures as well. Um, well keep, keep in mind too, Raylene, in terms of a mixed use project, where you've got commercial and residential in these in the mixed use projects where they've got restaurants say on the bottom floor mm -hmm. those restaurants have to comply with the mayor's new order and that's the responsibility of the owners of those restaurants that being said the association can send out like a memo to all of the commercial vendors reminding them of the uh the mayor's new you know, most recent orders and the need to comply with those orders. But it's not the association's responsibility to see that they do comply. It's actually the owner of the commercial unit's responsibility. Oh, good point. Good point. Yes. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to open this up. Any best practices other than what we've already talked about or if you want to recap it? Um, so now you want to start off with like the best practices for these for our condo properties on how to handle yeah, this. So, um, you know, we're in this together, really. I think uh, the association board needs to uh, keep updated with these new rules rolling out, either from the government, from the CDC, and also um, there are resources available, you know, through uh, Community Associations Institute, uh, even our local chapter, like our Condo Insider Program, has all these valuable informations. Uh, besides of your condo attorney, which you have to pay to get the legal advice and forms, there are also free resources out there, you know, you can utilize. For example, a good idea, you know, for people to use the common amenities, it might be a good practice for the associations to consider requiring uh, 
uh, I see a liability release waiver for gas uh, for someone who hasn't got, you know, I think across the board, if you want to use it during this pandemic time, you got to, uh, you know, sign that form. And also, uh, of course, uh, the, the city also re recommended you may it would be a good idea to keep a register list of whoever uses the facility if someone you know gets tested positive you know who to contact for them to get tested to avoid this become a cluster event for spreading the disease uh you know those are all practices of course if you have the budget you can also consider installing those temperature you know um measuring devices in your facility and also uh, make sure you know your policies uh you know all the unit owners uh residents tenants are on the same page about what your project rule is if someone is sick they know they have to stay quarantined for certain days before they should they can go out or they can access those common areas uh there should also be uh guidance on you know what you know, uh, you should do if someone gets test positive, those protocols, uh, those forms should be ready in place if you need it. And similar thing for employees, you know, as an employer, you know, the association, similar as any other employee, uh, employer has the right to mandate the COVID, but then there's going to be exceptions, accommodations has to be provided. You want to make sure you know what to do when something happens, not just, you know, all of a sudden when you need to respond uh, rapidly, but you are not ready. That's not going to be good. Okay. Uh, you want to add on anything, um, Laurie? Uh, I pretty much agree with everything Nalan said. I, um, you know, I think the main thing is you want to continually update your policy. So as new government orders come out, as new CDC guidelines come out, you can update your policy so that you're in line, certainly with the CDC guidelines, because you're going to have owners that are following this and they're going to want to know what our policies are at every given moment. And I would also post those policies in your elevators, in your lobbies, so that they're easily accessible to everyone at all times. Yeah, and I want to send a kind of a little um, reminder to everybody, because I know everybody's trying to transition to town square. So all the communication they wanted to be town square. And I told some people, I said, you know what, everybody comes home at the end of the day, they've been on their laptops or computers, desktops all day checking emails. I personally would not want to come home and have to log into another thing and read emails. And I, I mean, when I come in at picking post a notice or in the elevator about something new that's important, that would be really a lot better than just say, oh, you go need to log in the town square. I mean, I know it's supposed to be simple, but sometimes to me in this particular state of where we are today, that sometimes if it's like something more urgent, you really have to do the manual and post a notice mm -hmm. and not say, well, you need to go check online, you know, really. And even CDC guidelines and the one Oahu guidelines, sometimes I tell people like, well, you need to post on your bulletin board. So everybody sees it and posts the link if they want to check it themselves. You just really need to sometimes do things manually so you can get the message out. So, um, and I think we're kind of running out of time. And I really, really, both of you, Laurie and I, I really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy day to do this Condo Insider. Um, we are going to email blast it out to our, our contacts um, along with John Kennard. So I was waiting to do this one and send them both out together so that they would have both of them. So thank you so much, thank both you. of you for doing this thank for you. me and for HCCA. And some people wanted to know our HCCA's position on it. And we really, HCCA does not take any position. I mean, really we just do what we're, we're what a reasonable person would do, you know? And we have an obligation to protect ourselves and our families and the people around us. So you do what you need to do to protect yourselves from this COVID. Um, you know, I, I'm hunkering down. I mean, <laughs> I had some banking things to do and I just waited until it was like, I have to go do it today, you know? But I, if I don't have to go out, I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> so thank God for, um, thank goodness for these webinars um, yeah, and yeah. Zoom. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. And then um, we're gonna be posting the, the DOH contact information to arrange for a COVID site along with our email blast. Thank you, everybody. I really right. appreciate it. Hope uh -huh. to see you guys in person soon. All right. Take Thank care. you. Take care and stay safe, everybody. All right.